Hi, in this lecture we're going to talk about the guiding standards and skills behind using technology in your lessons. Uh, one of the things we're going to look at here, one of the assumptions that I'm going on rather, is that you have a base knowledge of, of the concepts we're going to talk about, example being Common Core. What I want to do to frame this is talk a little bit about the overlap between them. I oftentimes hear administrators talk about you know different standards and, and for instance what some have referred to as the alphabet soup of education in terms of we see Common Core, IEPs, ISTE Nets, CCSS, we hear all these different things and, I, and it can get a bit overwhelming. So I just wanted to talk about these three concepts briefly and, and bring out or, or make some of the overlap evident. We're going to start with 21st century uh, skills. If we look at it, depending on how you look at it, 21st century skills are sometimes thought of an error as just how to use technology, how to use uh, computers and so forth. That's not true. There's a lot of different parts to the 21st century skills. If you go to a site called P21, which I'll, I'll provide links to everything I discuss in the supplementary materials for this lesson, you'll see very predominantly throughout the site this uh, illustration and it, and it does a good job. You have your, your core subjects which is all the content knowledge but then you have this outer ring involving information media and technology skills, learning and innovation, and life and career skills. This whole area here is where 21st century skills lie in this illustration. But if you want to break it down, another way of looking at it that I put together is this one. Um, you have life and career skills and this is basically a different way of looking at the, the previous uh, illustration. Under life and career skills you have flexibility, initiative, uh, cross-cultural interaction, productivity, and accountability. And just to back step for a second, a lot of corporations have cited that these are the types of skills that, you know, as a whole, these three areas that are, are really important and, and unfortunately oftentimes lacking in, in students entering the workforce. So you can see that none of this is really new, but for instance, the flexibility, productivity, uh, taking initiative, and all those on the left there, are there's there's obvious importance to them. They are things that you know would really benefit and, and are essential to someone entering the workforce. Our second part here, we see critical thinking, collaboration, and innovation. So critical thinking, you're talking higher level blooms, collaboration, ability for students to work together. There's obvious connections there when we think about the technology we discussed throughout this course. Uh, and then to the right here, we have uh, information media and technology skills. And this is where we see the ability to access and evaluate information, evaluate information, and analyze it. And in terms of that, you think about, you know, it used to be you went to the library and you looked something up. And we can access things a lot easier. Just enter any word into Google or Yahoo search and you'll come up with literally millions of them. But a lot of people don't realize that the first things that pop up aren't necessarily the most credible. They're the ones that are the most popular and you need to know how to sift through this material effectively to find the information that is most useful to your purpose. And this is a good skill to build with students. And then same thing with media literacy. And then the technologies, knowing how to use the materials effectively. There's a term that was coined by a, a, a scholar named Prensky uh, called digital native and it says that you know basically students or the younger generation grow up exposed to this technology therefore they're native to it whereas the educators in many cases are the the digital immigrants well just because a student grew up with the technology doesn't necessarily mean that they know how to use it well and it's something to consider you know I've seen a lot of students who do PowerPoints and they spend so much time putting in animations and everything they don't use it in an effective manner and their presentations end up suffering because of it. Here we have the ISTE nets and if you look at this you're going to see a lot of the terms that we saw before. We have collaboration, uh, communication in terms of communicating your thoughts. This could be in writing, it could be in presentation which goes back to the technology. Research and information we see the uh, the, the media and literacy and, and information, or excuse me, information and media literacy, critical thinking. So there's a lot of overlap here, a lot of overlap between this one and the previous one. 
the way the Common Core is arranged is in such a fashion that you have argumentative writing, uh, narrative writing, um, ability to communicate. So not just writing, for instance, an argument, but being able to write ongoing pieces and to persuade others. And part of that is effective communication. So there's a lot of overlap there. In closing, you need to realize that a lot of the stuff that we're looking at here in terms of common core and 21st century skills, none of the skills are new. There's no, there's no skill or standard listed that is totally innovative and that you've never heard of before. It just maybe has some renewed importance and maybe a different dynamic in how we address it due to the new technologies we have access to. And you know that speaks to the fact that there's definite overlap between those. If you look at those, you're going to see evidence of the, the importance of evaluation, critical thinking, collaboration. All of these, communication, information literacy, and digital literacy, run throughout these. Um, for instance, some people miss the digital literacy and the information literacy but if in the Common Core, but if you look at the Common Core, you have the ability to analyze and critique uh, primary and secondary resources. That's information literacy. The ability to communicate yourself using the appropriate technologies in an effective manner. Digital literacy. One critique of things like Common Core and 21st century skills is they, some have interpreted that as, what about content? What about facts? Well, as I said in my theoretical discussion, the content is still there. It's still very important. You need that base of information. You, I look at this as a two-part uh, issue where you have your content and you have your skills and you use them both to help teach the other. And going back a step in terms of, I speak about this in the introduction, good teaching is good teaching. If you take a teacher, uh, a good teacher, you're not going to replace them with technology. But if you take a good solid teacher who knows how to use the technology effectively, they're going to have a real advantage there. But the key here is that technology is never going to replace a te good teacher. You need to rely on what works best for you and use the, the, the technology to help you in, to optimize learning. Thanks.